Hey guys, I'm still working on this uh, Triumph TR6 transmission that I showed you the other day. We made that video how a transmission works. So on the comments of that video, some people asked why didn't I show how the synchro rings work? And that's a good question. I don't have an answer for it. <laughs> I should have, I agree. I should have showed also how synchro rings work and what their role is and why things are grinding when there's no synchro rings there or when the synchro ring is worn. So I'm assuming that you've watched that video of, of how a transmission works and if you haven't I recommend that you go and watch that first and then come back here and I'll explain how synchro ring works. So assuming that you watch that video you know that there are two shafts here input and main shaft or output shaft. So the input shaft can spin independently from the output shaft like this. So this is the case, for example, when we are in neutral and the clutch is engaged, our foot is off the pedal, so we are sitting on a traffic light, let's say, in neutral. Our input shaft is spinning because our crankshaft is spinning, the crankshaft is spinning our clutch disc, the clutch disc is spinning the input shaft of the transmission, the input shaft of the transmission is spinning the counter gear underneath, the counter gear is spinning our first, second and third gears as well, but because the hubs are not engaged to any gears, the output shaft is stationary. So that's what happens. Our first, second and third gears and the drive gear and the counter shaft underneath spin, but they just idle. They don't transfer the power to our output shaft because our output shaft is connected to our rear wheels and the rear wheels are not spinning as we're sitting on the traffic light. So when the light is green, we want to start going so we need to put our transmission into first gear. So what do we do first? We press the pedal, we disengage the clutch. So now our input shaft continues to spin because of momentum, but it is not spinning as fast as the crankshaft anymore. It has some momentum though, so it's gonna take a while until it stops spinning. While this is still spinning by momentum, we are eager to start going and we start pressing on the shifter and the shifter is pressing on the selector ring and the selector ring is trying to engage with the first gear. How do they engage? Well, this is another discarded selector ring, but you see it has splines inside and this is another gear which is smaller than this one, but it is basically the same. It has these teeth. So the selector ring needs to engage with these teeth on the gear. But what happens is, this one is spinning, and this one is stationary. So as it's spinning, of course it's gonna grind, and the teeth will never match. That's a problem. So before this ring engages with our gear, we need to equalize the speed. But our first gear is still spinning by momentum, because now it is disengaged from the engine. So if we wait long enough, it eventually is gonna slow down and stop, but we don't have time to wait. We need to slow it down now, so we can engage this and start going. So this is where the synchro ring comes in place. So the synchro ring has its inner diameter, which is actually tapered. If you pay attention here, it is a little bit tapered and the gear, let's say this is our first gear, also has this surface which is also tapered. So this taper matches this taper. When they go like this and there's no pressure this way, they can just spin like that. But if we put pressure on them, now they engage. The taper engages really strong and it creates a lot of friction and now it can't spin anymore. They are engaged. So you see where I'm going with that, right? So when we're pushing on the shifter to go into first gear, we're pushing on this ring. This ring is pushing on the synchro ring, which is here in between. You see it there? So we're pushing on the synchro ring. The synchro ring is pushing on the taper of the gear. So the friction is gonna slow it down to a point where it totally stops to zero. And in that moment, we will be able to slide our ring and now they are engaged. And now we can let go of the clutch and our input shaft is gonna start turning the counter shaft underneath. The counter shaft is gonna turn our first gear. The first gear is gonna turn this ring. This ring is gonna turn the hub. The hub is gonna turn the output shaft. And 
from there the drive shaft, the differential and our wheels. And now we start going. So we are going in first gear and we reach certain speed, let's say 10 miles per hour. Now we want to sw switch to second gear. What happens is we press the clutch again, but our wheels are now spinning, don't forget. So even though we uh, press the clutch, our input shaft still spins because our output shaft is connected to it through the hub here in first gear. So as the clutch is disengaged, we go back to neutral. Now the two shafts are disengaged. This one keeps spinning with the same speed because the wheels are turning it. This one though starts slowing down because it still spins by momentum. But again, we are eager to put second gear. So again, we start pushing this way, but this gear now spins together with our input shaft and its speed doesn't necessarily match the speed of our hub and our output shaft. So again, with the shifter, we're pushing back to switch into second gear. The shifter is pushing this ring forward. This ring is pushing the synchro ring underneath. The synchro ring is getting tight on the taper here and it slows down now this gear or speeds it up. It depends on what speed our input shaft spins with, like together with this gear. So as we press on them, our clutch is disengaged. That allows this gear to slow down or to speed up, match the speed of the hub. And then we can easily slide this ring on top of it. And now they are spinning together. They become one. And now we can engage the clutch again and our input shaft is going to spin our output shaft through our second gear. And it is the same for third and fourth gear. So that's how the magic of the synchro ring happens. And of course, when it's worn, when here this inner diameter is worn, it becomes bigger. And because the two are tapered, that allows the synchro ring to go further and further towards the gear and at some point it's so worn that this surface hits this surface and our taper is still not creating enough friction so that's when we push on the synchro ring but it doesn't slow down or it doesn't speed up this gear the speed is not equalized and we're just grinding these inner splines with these teeth here and and we grind them until this grinding process here slows it down or speeds it up and then we engage it. That's why it's very important that our synchro rings are not worn and they are, they are in place. So they replace the grinding, you know, they do the same thing as the grinding, but they do it smoothly. They don't grind them. They just do it smoothly through this surface and this surface. How do we know if our synchro ring is worn without taking the whole transmission apart? Let's say we took the cover out for whatever reason and we want to see if our synchro rings need replacement or not. Well, it's easy. The distance between the gear and the synchro ring, this gap here, needs to be greater than 30 tau. I don't have a 30 tau leaf here, but I can put together, let's say, 15 and 16, so that's 31. And if I put it here, this is pretty tight. So this synchro ring is pretty worn. I can't even put them inside. But these ones, I just replaced them. If I try, like I have to press against it and there's lots of room here. We probably have, I don't want to check it now, but we probably have like 45 tau there, if not more than that. So these new synchro rings are good that's how you measure them so that's it guys that's the magic of the synchro rings i hope this video helped you understand even that part of the transmission how it works and now this is not a secret for you anymore so <laughs> that's it guys thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye